Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number three in a series on electric power, which is the unit for DC physics topic. Today we're going to be looking at forces on moving charges. To give you a little bit of a background, um, let's, let's think about the electric charge that we have flowing through a conductor. As all of that charge moved through the conductor, it produced a magnetic field. Put that inside a Put, put the moving charge inside a magnetic field, it then experiences a force. We had the right hand slap rule in order to um, to, to determine the, the direction of the force given the current direction and the direction of the magnetic field. So what we're going to do today is extend that to an actual individual charge. What happens if we just shoot a charge through a magnetic field? So let's consider if we have, uh, what, what, what factors are going to affect the size of a current? Let's start with that first and then we're going to relate that to the force that it would experience for a given charge. So in theory, what we could do is for a given wire, you could produce the same current either by moving a large number of charges through slowly because remember charge is a current is the amount of charge per unit time passing that point so if you move lots of charge slowly or you can move a small number of charges but you move them really quickly the same amount of charge gets passed but you're only using moving small amounts but you're just doing it quickly okay so basically what we're saying is current depends on the amount of charge and how quickly it's moving. So what we want to do now is actually relate that to what the effect would be on a f uh, uh, in terms of a force on an individual charge. As you know, the magnetic force on either of these currents is, is the same. If you have a force moving, sorry, if you've got the faster particle, the faster charge, the force has to be greater because there's less of the charges. So the same amount of force spread over less charges, so the force will be greater on the faster moving charge. So basically what we're saying is it's dependent on their speed as well as their charge. The faster it moves, the greater the force, as well as the greater the charge, the greater the force. So how do we calculate that? What's a mathematical way that we look at that? So basically uh, it's dependent on the magnetic field strength, it's dependent on the charge, it's dependent on the velocity. So therefore force on a charge is equivalent to the charge of the particle times the velocity that it's traveling at times the magnetic field strength. Now the way that we work this out is in terms of the direction of the force is using a right hand palm rule. It's practically identical to the previous FBI rule except now we're not using I, we're using the velocity. So fingers again representing the direction of the field. We've got the thumb. This time it represents the velocity, the direction that it's traveling as opposed to the direction of the current but it's you know you can think of it in much the same way and then the palm is going to be the force. Okay, If it's a negative charge, if we've got an electron, it's the opposite direction. So remember we always think in terms of conventional current positive charge. Now if the force is going to act at right angles to its direction of travel, what does that do to the motion of the particle as it goes. Basically we're going to create circular movement. It's always not going to change its velocity but it is going to change its direction. Okay so it's going to, we're looking at circular motion again. Force at right angles causes it to continually change in a circular path. Okay so here again just listing the equation but if the force is acting towards the center that means as it moves in that direction, we've got a continual force pointing at right angles to its velocity at that given point. And so we get circular motion. Ooh.
Let's see that again. Wasn't that amazing piece of animation? Okay, so how do we see this? Where do we see this in life? Well, less and less now that we're not using cathode ray tube uh, TVs, but this was really one of the principal or fundamental principles for making a TV screen work. Basically, you've got these coils here creating magnetic fields, so they're firing electrons, and depending on the magnetic field as to where it would de deflect the electron to hit the uh, back of the screen. So you've got the current continually flowing, th flowing through, and basically 25 times every second you would sweep out, or the TV would sweep out 25, uh, 625 horizontal lines. So it would sweep out 625 horizontal lines to light up the TV screen 25 times a second. So it's a serious amount of deflection in a very short time. Okay, let's have a look at an example. Particle enters this page from the right. This is our right over here for those of us that don't know our left from our right. It's the one that you write with if you're right handed. Okay, magnetic field is out of the page. What's the direction of the force? Okay, so FBI rule. We've got fingers out of the page. We've got fingers out of the page. We've got thumb going to the across the page to the left direction of the force I would say direction of the force is going to be up unless of course this particle was negative we're not given the information so up or down is practically right here depending on the scenario okay so that's it that's just basic use of make sure that you can get your hand in that awkward position to get your palm facing up to show that that is the correct way. And that's it for this uh, screencast. Thanks.